30 degree heat and I decide a black t-shirt is the best thing to wear. Right, if you want to have a discussion or cause an argument with a photographer, there are three questions you could ask them. DSLR versus mirrorless, Canon versus Nikon versus Sony, and full frame versus APS-C. Now, I've done videos on all of these in the past and everyone has their own opinion because at the end of the day, everything is personal preference. But today we're not going to get into any discussions as to which is a better system or anything like that. Today is a kind of follow on from the video I did about full frame versus APS-C. You know, a lot of people shoot full frame, a lot of people shoot APS-C. There are a lot of varying factors as to which is going to be better suited to you. But some of the comments from that video and from other videos that I've done kind of suggest that some people aren't completely clear as to what the true difference is between full frame and crop sensor are. So today we're going to look at the physical differences between a full frame and an APS-C and then how those differences affect things like the images that you get from them, the exposure values, the depth of field, the noise performance, how the lenses change, all a bit more of an in-depth look as to what the true differences between full frame and APS-C are. So if you're maybe somebody who is currently shooting with APS-C and you've always seen other people shooting full frame and thought, do I need to go to full frame? If you're unsure, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a bit more of a clear idea. So firstly, what is full frame? What is APS-C? These refer to the size of the sensors in the cameras. So in the pre-digital age, cameras used to take film. So full frame sensors are the same size as film used to be. APS-C cameras or crop sensor cameras use smaller sensors. So what difference does that actually make? So the first major difference is how much of the image you are actually physically able to see. For example, if I mount a 200 millimeter lens onto a full frame camera, I will get a 200 millimeter field of view. But if I mount that same 200 millimeters onto a crop sensor camera, the lens will still project a 200 millimeter field of view into the camera, but the sensor can't physically see all of the image that's being projected. It can only see that kind of center 24 mil section. And this is where we get crop factor from. So Canon APS-C cameras have a crop factor of 1.6. Nikon and Sony cameras have a crop factor of 1.5 because their sensors are slightly bigger than the Canon ones. Now that crop factor is the number that you have to multiply your focal length by to work out what you're kind of seeing in a full frame equivalency. So for example, if you mount a 10 millimeter lens onto an APS-C Canon camera, you multiply 10 millimeters by 1.6, you get an equivalent 16 millimeters, which means that that 10 millimeter lens is going to give you exactly the same sort of field of view that you would get if you mounted a 16 millimeter lens onto a full frame camera. So APS-C's crop into the image. Now, there are some advantages, there are some disadvantages to this, depending on what you're trying to photograph. If you're trying to photograph things that are quite far away from you, the crop factor can help. So things like kind of wildlife, birds, sport shooters, that sort of thing, the crop factor can be a benefit at times because you don't need as long a physical lens in order to get the same sort of look. For example, 200 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera gives you about a 300, 320 millimeter equivalent field of view. So to get that same look on a full frame camera, you would need a 300 millimeter lens, which is obviously going to be a lot bigger, a lot heavier, a lot more expensive. Downside obviously is if you're trying to take wider angle shots, then that crop factor works against you. So take a 16 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, you get a very wide 16 millimeter field of view. Mount that same lens onto a crop sensor camera and it suddenly gets cut into about a 24 millimeter field of view, which isn't really all that wide. The crop factor also affects depth of field. Now depth of field is the blurring effect that you get in your foreground and background in order to kind of help isolate a subject. Because there are two key factors that affect background blur, aperture and focal length. So a wider aperture is going to give you a shallower depth of field. So having a longer focal length is going to help compress your image, is going to help isolate out the background. So a longer focal length gives you more background blur and more separation as well. But then this is where the crop factor becomes a problem. 
So let's say, for example, I wanted to take a portrait of somebody that required 135 millimeter field of view in order to frame my subject correctly. Well, it's very easy on a full frame camera. You just shoot at 135 millimeters and you get 135 millimeter field of view. Problem is with APS-C, you've got a factor in the crop factor. So 135 millimeter equivalent focal length on an APS-C camera is actually achieved by using something more like an 85 millimeter physical focal length. Problem with that is an 85 millimeter focal length at the same aperture doesn't give you the same depth of field as 135 millimeters does on the full frame. So let me demonstrate this to you now using my little mascot here, because you know, what grown man doesn't own a teddy bear? So for this test, I've got the Sony a7 III with a 70 to 200 millimeter F4. And then I have the Canon 60D, which is an old APS-C camera using the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter F4L lens. There's obviously potential varying factors such as the image quality, the sharpness, the color renditions, all that sort of stuff. We're not interested in any of that right now. All we're interested in with this is how the crop factor affects the look of the image when shot at the same focal length and how shooting with the same equivalent focal length affects the depth of field. So, are you ready? Good. Let's go. So this is the two cameras. Both of these are actually at 70 millimeters focused on my little model here. And you can see there's quite a noticeable difference between how much of the frame you can see off the APS-C camera versus what you can see on the full frame camera. Now, let's take both of these into 200 millimeters, see what the difference is. So at 200 millimeters, the full frame still got quite a lot of room around the subject. Whereas the crop sensor, because it's got that 1.6 times crop factor, is got about an equivalent of 320 millimeters. So the bear pretty much fills the frame with the crop sensor. Now, obviously, if you, that's what you're going for. If you want the subject to fill the frame and you're quite far away, this is where the crop factor can help. But now let's move the cameras a little bit closer so that the full frame fills the frame how I would want it to, and then let's see how the APS-C stacks up with that. Now I've moved the cameras out quite a bit closer to get more of a kind of tight headshot set up on the full frame camera. But you can see now with the APS-C, that 300 mil equivalent focal length is cutting in a huge amount, which isn't ideally what we want. So now let's change the focal length on the APS-C to get the same composition as we've got with the full frame. So I've now had to zoom out the APS-C camera to about 135 millimeters to get that same sort of equivalent 200 millimeter field of view. But if I bring up the two sample images now, you will see that the full frame has quite a bit more background blur than what we are getting from the APS-C. And that's because the picture with the full frame is taken 200 mil F4 versus 135 millimeter F4 on the APS-C. So the full frame is giving us that little bit more isolation. Now, something else that I wanna highlight with those two images is the exposures because uh, quite a lot of people have questioned when they've messaged me and asked about full frame versus APS-C. There's obviously the notion that a full frame sensor is physically larger. So if you've got a 24 megapixel full frame camera and a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, both have the same number of pixels, but the full frame has more room to fit those pixels in. So physically the pixels can be made bigger, so can capture more light. So people obviously get the idea, bigger pixels means more light captured, so lower ISOs. That isn't kind of completely true because both of those test images there were shot at a 320th of a second shutter speed 
with an aperture of f4 and ISO 100. Now there's obviously slight differences with the looks of the images but that's more to do with the picture profiles and stuff. I tried to match them up as best as I could but they're two completely different camera systems so the images are going to have a little bit of a different look to them but in terms of actual kind of brightness levels the exposure there's no difference between the two. So that's how sensor size affects the look of your image in terms of the focal length and the depth of field. Now, as I just mentioned, larger sensor sizes generally give you better noise performance as well. But to demonstrate this, I'm not gonna compare up these two cameras because it's a bit of an uneven contest. You see, this is a brand new 24 megapixel full frame camera that was released this year. Whereas this has a sensor in it that's about 10 years old and is only 18 megapixels, so it's a kind of uneven balance. So I'm gonna bring up two test shots, one taken with the Sony a7 III and one taken with this, the Canon EOS M5, because both of these cameras are 24 megapixel resolution and both of them have kind of fairly modern current level sensors. There's obviously gonna be some discrepancies from one brand to another, but just to give you some idea, here are two sample images taken at pretty much the same equivalent focal length. The a7 III on the left, the Canon EOS M5 on the right. Now both are shot at base ISO and you can see in terms of noise performance, there's not really a busting lot of difference. Now what I'm gonna do is bring the shutter and aperture down in order to darken the image and I can force the ISO to be higher. And here's the difference. You can see the noise performance from the full frame camera is better at high ISOs compared to the crop. So full frame sensors let you see more of the image coming from the lens. They let you get more out of focus backgrounds and they give you better high ISO noise performance. So why the hell would anybody buy an APS-C, right? Well, there's two sides to every argument. You see, the advantages to an APS-C over a full frame. Firstly, there's the cost element. Because the sensor is physically smaller, they are cheaper to make. So therefore, the cost of the camera can be brought down. So APS-C is more affordable. Then you've got the lenses themselves. Now, like I said, you've obviously got to include the crop factor in the focal length when you're working out what your effective focal length is going to be. But because APS-C sensors are physically smaller, then it means if you get a lens that is specifically designed for APS-C cameras, then the lens can be designed so it only needs to project the image to the size of an APS-C sensor. Now what this means is the focal lengths don't physically change. So if you were to take an APS-C lens and shoot it at 150 millimeters, you will still get exactly the same image that you would get if you shot it with a full frame lens at 150 millimeters on a crop sensor body. But because the lens only needs to project the image to a much smaller surface area, the lens itself can be made a lot smaller. So it means that not only can the lens be made smaller, but it also can be made cheaper because it's not as complicated to make. And then it also opens up the possibility for kind of lens designs that aren't really possible with a full frame. But if you compare up, for example, a Canon 10 to 18 millimeter, it's a very affordable, little cheap plastic lens. To get that same actual focal length from a lens that can project an image to a full frame sensor, you would have to look to the 11 to 24 millimeter F4L, and that thing is an absolute monster. Now, obviously, it's kind of an apples to oranges because you don't physically see a 10 millimeter field of view from the APS-C, but the lens is still physically a 10 millimeter focal length. So that just highlights how much of a difference in size and weight to a lens having a smaller sensor can make over having a full frame. In terms of full frame versus APS-C in regards to focal length, it doesn't make any difference when it comes to lenses. The focal length that lenses state is the physical focal length of that lens. You always have to include the APS-C crop factor in regardless of whether you are using a full frame lens or an APS-C lens. So at the end of the day, the answer to the question, which is better, full frame or APS-C, is exactly the same as the answer to the question, which is better, mirrorless or DSLR, or which is better, Sony, Canon or Nikon. It's personal preference. You might be somebody who's on a relatively tight budget, so can't afford to buy a full frame camera body. Fair enough, APS-C is there for you. 
you might be somebody who doesn't shoot at particularly high ISOs or you're not that critical about getting the most out of focus background possible, APS-C is still an option for you. But by the same token, maybe you do shoot at high ISOs that little bit more. Maybe you do want the most out of focus backgrounds possible. Maybe you do want to get the widest angle of view you can physically find. Full frame is generally better suited towards those sorts of situations, but it does come with a hefty price tag and a lot heavier kit as well. But remember folks, just because one system better suits somebody else doesn't necessarily mean it's the right system for you. Likewise, just because it's the right system for you doesn't mean it's the right system for everybody. At the end of the day, everything is personal preference and personal taste. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next one.